Chapter Twenty of the American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patty Cunningham. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter Twenty. Common Drinks. Three three six. Coffee. Old Java and Mocha coffee are the best kinds. Coffee should be put in an iron pot and dried over a moderate fire for several hours before it is roasted. It should be put at such a distance from the fire as to be in no danger of burning. When it has dried three or four hours, set the pot on a hot bed of coals and stir it constantly until sufficiently roasted, which is ascertained by biting one of the lightest colored kernels. If it is brittle, the whole is done. Turn it out of the pot immediately into a box. Cover it tight to keep in the steam. A coffee roaster is better than a pot to roast coffee in, as it preserves the fine aromatic flavor of the coffee, which in a great measure escapes with the steam of the coffee when roasted in an open pot. To make good common coffee, allow a tablespoonful of it when ground to each pint of water. Turn on the water boiling hot. And boil the coffee in a tin pot from twenty to twenty-five minutes. If boiled longer, it will not taste fresh and lively. Let it stand after being taken from the fire four or five minutes to settle. Then turn it off carefully from the grounds into a coffee pot or urn. When the coffee is put on the fire to boil, a piece of fish skin or isinglass the size of a ninepence should be put in, or else the white and shell of half an egg. To a couple of quarts of coffee, many persons dislike to clear coffee with fish skin, thinking that it imparts an unpleasant taste to coffee. But it will not if properly prepared. The skin should be taken from mild codfish that has not been soaked, as the skin loses its clearing properties by soaking. Rinse it in cold water and dry it perfectly. When dried, cut it into pieces of the size of a ninepence. If torn off as it is wanted for use, too much is apt to be put in at once and give the coffee a bad taste. A piece the size of a twelve and a half cent piece is sufficient to settle a couple of quarts of water. French coffee is made in a German filter. The water is turned on boiling hot, and one third more coffee is necessary than when boiled in the common way. Where cream cannot be procured for coffee, the coffee will be much richer to boil it with a less proportion of water than the above rule, and weaken it with boiling hot milk when served out in cups. Three three seven, tea. Scald the teapot, and if the tea is a strong kind, a teaspoonful for a pint of water is sufficient. If it is a weak kind, more will be required. Pour on just enough boiling water to cover the tea and let it steep. Green tea should not steep for more than five or six minutes before drinking. If steeped longer, it will not be lively. Black tea requires steeping ten or twelve minutes to extract the strength. Three three eight, chocolate. Scrape the chocolate off fine. Mix it smooth with water. If liked very rich, make the chocolate entirely of milk. If not, use half water. Boil water and milk together. Then stir in the chocolate previously mixed with water. Stir till it boils. Then sweeten it to your taste and take it up. If liked rich, grate in a little nutmeg. A tablespoonful of chocolate to a pint of water or milk is about the right proportion. Three three nine, hop beer. Put to six ounces of hops five quarts of water, and boil them three hours. Then strain off the liquor. And put to the hops four quarts more of water, a teacup full of ginger, and boil the hops three hours longer. Strain and mix it with the rest of the liquor, and stir in a couple of quarts of molasses. Take about half a pound of bread and brown it very slowly. When very brown and dry, put it in the liquor to enrich the beer. Rusked bread is the best for this purpose, but a loaf of bread cut in slices and toasted till brittle will do very well. When rusked bread is used, pound it fine and brown it in a pot as you would coffee, stirring it constantly. 
When the hop liquor cools, so as to be just lukewarm, add a pint of new yeast that has no salt in it. Keep the beer covered in a temperate situation till it has ceased fermenting, which is ascertained by the subsiding of the froth. Turn it off carefully into a beer keg or bottles. The beer should not be corked very tight, or it will burst the bottles. It should be kept in a cool place. 340. Beer of Essential Oils Mix a couple of quarts of boiling water with a pint and a half of molasses. Stir in five quarts of cold water, then add ten drops of the oil of sassafras, ten of spruce, fifteen of wintergreen, and a teaspoonful of essence of ginger. When just lukewarm, put in half a pint of fresh lively yeast. When fermented, bottle and cork it, and keep it in a cool place. It will be fit to drink in the course of two or three days. 341. Spring Beer Take a small bunch of all or part of the following. Sweet fern, sarsaparilla, wintergreen, sassafras, prince's pine, and spice wood. Boil them with two or three ounces of hops to three or four gallons of water, and two or three raw potatoes, pared and cut in slices. The strength of the roots and hops is obtained more thoroughly by boiling them in two waters, for when the liquor is strongly saturated with the hops, it will rather bind up the roots rather than extract their juices. The roots should be boiled five or six hours. The liquor should then be strained, and a quart of molasses put to three gallons of the beer. If you wish to have the beer very rich, brown half a pound of bread, and put it into the liquor. If the liquor is too thick, dilute it with cold water. When it is just lukewarm, Put in a pint of fresh lively yeast that has no salt in it. The salt has a tendency to keep it from fermenting. Keep it in a temperate situation covered over, but not so tight as to exclude the air entirely or it will not work. When fermented, keep it in a tight keg or bottle and cork it up. 342. Ginger Beer Boil gently in a gallon of water, three tablespoons full of cream of tartar, three of ginger, and a lemon cut in slices. When it has boiled half an hour, take it from the fire, strain, and sweeten it to your taste. White sugar is best, but brown sugar or molasses answers very well. Put to it, when lukewarm, half a pint of fresh yeast. Turn it off carefully when fermented, bottle it, and keep it in a cool place. It will be fit to drink in the course of seven or eight days. 343. Three. Instantaneous Beer. Put to a pint and a half of water, four teaspoons full of ginger, a tablespoonful of lemon juice, sweeten it to the taste with syrup or white sugar, and turn it into a junk bottle. Have ready a cork to fit the bottle, a string of wire to tie it down, and a mallet to drive in the cork. Then put into the bottle a heaping teaspoonful of the supercarbonate of soda, cork it immediately, tie it down, then shake the hole up well, cut the string, and the cork will fly out. Turn it out and drink immediately. 344. Four. Mixed Wine Take equal parts of ripe currants, grapes, raspberries, and English cherries. Bruise them, then mix cold water with them in the proportion of four pounds of fruit to a gallon of water. Let the whole remain half a day. Stir the whole up well, then strain it. To each gallon of it put three pounds of sugar. Keep it in a temperate situation where it will ferment slowly three or four days. Stir it up frequently. When fermented, add a ninth part of brandy to it and stop it up tight. When it becomes clear, bottle it. In the course of a year it will be fit to drink. 345. Current Wine Strain the currants, which should be perfectly ripe. To each quart of juice put a couple of quarts of water and three pounds of sugar. Stir the whole well together, and let it stand twenty-four hours without stirring. Then skim, and set it in a cool place where it will ferment slowly. Let it remain three or four days. If at the end of that time it has ceased fermenting, add one quart of French brandy to every fifteen gallons of the liquor and close up the barrel tight. 
When it becomes clear, it is fit to bottle. This will be good in the course of six months, but is much improved by being kept several years. 346. Grape Wine Bruise the grapes, which should be perfectly ripe. To each gallon of grapes put a gallon of water, and let the whole remain a week without being stirred. At the end of that time, draw off the liquor carefully, and put to each gallon three pounds of lump sugar. Let it ferment in a temperate situation. When fermented, stop it up tight. In the course of six months, it will be fit to bottle. 347. To Mull Wine To a pint of water, put a teaspoonful of powdered cloves and cinnamon. Set it where it will boil. Then separate the whites and yolks of three eggs, and beat the yolks with a large spoonful of powdered white sugar. As soon as the water boils, turn it onto the yolks and sugar. Add a pint of wine, and turn the beaten whites of the eggs over the whole. 348. Quince Cordial Take ripe nice quinces, wipe off the fur, and grate them. Express the juices of the quince pulp through a strong cloth, and to each quart of it put two-thirds of a quart of French brandy, a pound and a half of white sugar, a hundred bitter almonds or peach meats, a dozen cloves. Put it in a stone pot, cover it tight, and keep it a week in a warm place. Then skim and bottle it, and let it remain a year before using it. 349. Peach Cordial Take ripe juicy peaches, wash and wipe them to get off the down, gash them to the stone. Put to each peck of peaches a gallon of French brandy, and cover them up tight. Let the whole remain a couple of months. Then drain the brandy free from the peaches. Add sufficient cold water to render it to the strength of a good white wine, and to every three gallons of it put four pounds of sugar. Stir it up well. Let it remain a couple of days, stirring it up well each day. Then turn it into a wine cask, and close it tight. 350. Smallage Cordial Take young sprouts of smallage, wash and drain them till perfectly dry. Cut them in small pieces, put them in a bottle with seeded raisins, having an alternate layer of each. When the bottle is two-thirds full of the smallage, turn in French brandy till the bottle is full. Let it remain three or four days to have the smallage absorb the brandy. Then put in as much more brandy as the bottle will hold. It will be fit for use in the course of eight or ten days. This is an excellent family medicine. 351. Currant Shrub To a pint of strained currant juice, put a pound of sugar. Boil the sugar and juice gently together eight or ten minutes, then set it where it will cool. Add, when lukewarm, a wine glass of French brandy to every pint of syrup. Bottle and cork it tight. Keep it in a cool place. 352. Raspberry Shrub To three quarts of fresh ripe raspberries, put one of good vinegar. Let it remain a day, then strain it, and put to each pint a pound of white sugar. Boil the whole together for half an hour. Skim it clear. When cool, add a wine glass of French brandy to each pint of the shrub. A couple of tablespoons of this, mixed with a tumbler two-thirds full of water, is a wholesome and refreshing drink in fevers. 353. Lemon Shrub Procure nice fresh lemons. Pare the rind off thin, then squeeze out the juice of the lemons, and strain it. To a pint of the juice put a pound of white sugar, broken into small pieces. Measure out for each pint of the syrup three tablespoons full of French brandy, and soak the rind of the lemons in it. Let the whole remain a day, stirring up the lemon juice and sugar frequently. The next day, turn off the syrup, and mix it with the brandy and lemon rinds. Put the whole in clean bottles, cork and seal them tight, and keep them in dry sand in a cool place. 354. Sherbet Boil in three pints of water, six or eight green stalks of rhubarb, a quarter of a pound of figs or raisins. When the whole has boiled between twenty-five and thirty minutes, 
strain it, and mix it with a teaspoonful of rose water, and lemon or orange syrup to the taste. Let it get cold before drinking it. 355. Nouveau. To three pints of French brandy, put four ounces of bitter almonds or peach meats, and a couple of ounces of sweet almonds. They should be bruised before they are mixed with the brandy. Add a half ounce each of powdered cinnamon and mace, a quarter of an ounce of cloves. Let the whole remain a fortnight, shaking it up well each day. Then drain off the brandy into another bottle, and put to the almonds a quart of water. Let it stand three days, then turn back the brandy, and put in a pound and a half of white sugar. Let the whole remain a week, stirring it up frequently. Then strain the liquor off, free from the dregs, into bottles for use. 356. Mead. Put to a pound of honey three pints of warm water. Stir it up well, and let it remain till the honey is held in complete solution. Then turn it into a cask, leaving the bung out. Let it ferment in a temperate situation. Bottle it as soon as fermented. Cork it up very tight. End of chapter 20 Recording by Patty Cunningham